Hi. The last time I was with you, I showed you how to get structure and texture onto large stones by using uh, fine table salt. When you sprinkle fine table salt on uh, wet watercolour paint, um, the salt absorbs water, and if there's pigment in it, it also absorbs uh, the pigment and leaves behind a pattern which you can use as um, structure on stones. I also promised you that the next time I would show you how to um, get structure onto stones by using um, art masking fluid. And uh, this is it. Now we're going to have a look to see how you can get structure um, or how to paint large stones by using art masking fluid. Art masking fluid, we all know what that is. It's, um, it's a rubber solution um, dissolved in ammoniac. The other thing you can use art masking fluid uh, for is um, if somebody faints, take the cap off, stick it underneath their nose and they'll be around like a flash. It's the ammoniac that does it. <laughs> the art masking fluid I've got here um, is grey in colour and it's quite easy to see when it's been painted onto, onto white paper. You can also get it in the colour of blue and different type of greys and yellows. But there is also one which is quite colourless. It is white, as white as the paper that you're going to put it on. And it's quite difficult to see sometimes, especially if you get a bit older. <laughs> um, so when I... well... When I some buy my art masking fluid, I make sure that I don't buy the white one. But if you do have the white one, and you have problems with seeing it on the white paper, then you can always colour it. And um, in another video, a Danish one which I did some time ago, I tried to explain how one can colour the um, art masking fluid. So have a look at this clip. You'll be able to understand it because I've dubbed it into English. What I do here is um, I dissolve the paint's grey paint on my palette and drop the coloured paint into the contents of the bottle. I do this several times until I'm satisfied with the colour of the art masking fluid. It's important that you don't use too much water when you dissolve your paint. Um, the whole idea is to deepen the colour of the art masking fluid in the bottle and not to fill it up with water. The bottle is then shaken thoroughly to mix the contents and um, I get a much darker art masking fluid, something which I can see on uh, white paper. As you know, um, art masking fluid is a very dangerous thing to get inside your, your large brushes. Now I know there are people always telling me how I should do it, how I should fill the brush first with soap or something like that, but um, <laughs> I don't trust them. I know that the best thing to do is to keep art masking fluid away from your brushes. Once you get them in and it dries, you'll never get them out. So, um, what am I going to do here? Because uh, I am going to paint it or put it onto my paper somehow. Well, it depends what you're going to be using it for. Um, now I'm going to be trying to get a texture on my stones. And um, if I can get a random pattern on my stones with this here art masking fluid, then this is the best thing. Um, I don't want to sit there painting it with a, with a brush. It will never look uh, natural in that way. So brushes are out. We're not going to use a brush. What we're going to use is kitchen towel or, or, yeah, or some sort of tissue or something like that. So I'm going to be using this and as you can 
Imagine <laughs> it is now almost impossible to get your tissue inside the bottle. <laughs> so um, we're going to get the stuff out of the bottle first and then we're going to use the tissue. The first thing I do always is to shake it around, make sure that it's still liquid, bumbling about inside the bottle there so I know it's all right. Take the cap off. Whoops. and pour it into this lid from a glass jar. It's not too small, um, there's got to be room for, for, for my tissue paper in a minute. I'm going to pour it in here, not too much at a time, and that is what I'm going to be using. Put the cap on and put it away. Another thing so I've got to do before I go um, start uh, using my heart masking fluid. I've got to draw my stones. I haven't got anything on my paper yet. I'm going to have three stones and I'm going to try and get different patterns on them. So I'm going to draw these stones here. They'll be standing in a field or something. Got three of them like that. Yes, have a good look, so like that. And the next thing I'm going to do is to take my art masking fluid and to put it onto the stones. I can paint all three, I mean I can put the art masking fluid on all three stones. I must probably try and change the pattern a little bit. It is no good doing it with a piece of paper or, 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 or a kitchen towel which is completely flat here. You won't get anything out of that. So um, it's got to be curled up a little bit so it gives me a lot of small points here. Okay, I put this into my art masking fluid here. Then I go to my stones. That could be one of them. Another one there. And a little bit less on the third one, just to show what will happen if you don't put too much stuff on. This thing here, throw it away. Make sure it doesn't come anywhere near your brushes. If you get it on your brushes and you haven't realised you have, it'll dry on the on your brush and you can buy a new brush. Now um, these three stones here, or rather the art masking fluid on these three stones here, has to dry. You can't do anything with this until it's dry. So we're going to let this dry. Just to make sure that the uh, art masking fluid on these stones is completely dry, I'm going to give it a blast with uh, a hairdryer. If you haven't used uh, art masking fluid before, um, then um, when you look at the masking fluid on your paper at a certain angle, you must probably see that it's, uh, it's shiny. And uh, one knows that shiny things are wet. But um, this is one of the things which, even though it is shiny, it is now dry. And I can test it with my finger. And uh, if it doesn't stick to my finger, then it's, then it's dry enough to paint. A little bit here. So if you get very thick layer, then it really takes it. Then it takes a little bit longer to to dry. But um, yeah. So I'll just give it this one an extra blast. Anyway, I'm pretty sure now that it is um, dry enough to paint. The next thing to do is to decide which colours I'm going to have on my stones. I think I shall have three different colours. 
perhaps sort of brownish one, a uh, reddish one. There are a lot of red stones on the island where I live. And perhaps a bluish stone or something. So I'm going to mix the three colours here. The, um, the brown one, I'm thinking of uh, yeah, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna alone is a little bit light and a little bit yeah, reddish perhaps. But it's not the red colour which I require for my other stones. So I'm going to give a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to this. And you'll see every time I add a little blue to the brown, it gets darker. And if I decide this is the colour which I want, so I'm going to stop with that colour there. For the other stone, the, uh, the one in the middle, I'm going to give, I'm going to make it a little bit redder. So reddish stone, and um, actually it is almost the same colour except I shall be adding a little bit of alizarin crimson to, to it to get this reddish colour. That's alizarin, and the colour of the stone, uh, perhaps a bit too red. It's something around, around here. That's a sort of reddish stone that we've got on the island here. For the last one, the last stone here, well, I shall start with ring blue. That's much too blue for a stone. It's more like a sky or a sea. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. It will still be bluish, but it'll be some greyish blue. So those are the three colours I'm going to be using for my stones. Wash my brush out and start with the first stone. And that was the that was the colour here, the first colour. Burnt sienna. Something blue. I just add a little bit more here. And I start painting the whole of the stone with this colour. You can see that the areas where which are covered by the art masking fluid do not accept the colour. And that is one of the principles with this technique here. There are going to be areas which do not take the colour. I hope there'll be a, quite a lot of areas which will take the colour, but you don't have to fight against this, it just doesn't take the colour, so that's fine. And it looks like that. The next colour which I want to use is this reddish colour. And this one I also paint onto my stone. When I get to the border between the two stones, I try. Don't don't force it here. I don't try and so it was. I don't try to 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 go completely into stone. If, if a little white line shows itself, then it's okay. This was burnt sienna, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. I have to mix a little bit more of that quickly and then I paint it onto the stone. Again, the areas which are covered with art masking fluid do not take the colour. That is fine, that is exactly that's exactly what is supposed to happen. And uh, something like that. The third one, the third colour for the third stone here was the bluish. Wash the colour out of my brush. into the colour here and again paint it on here. Oh, if they run into each other it's just fine because I'm not trying to do a, a sort of a perfect picture of stones. And even though if I was I would still allow colours to run a little bit into each other. I want a little bit more strength to my colour, so I just give it a little bit more blue and brown. 
but still oh, still in the in the bluish area yeah so those are the three stones painted first with art masking fluid and now with with the paint with the color that the stones should have and again I've got to let this I've got to let this dry before I can do anything else while I'm waiting for the stones to dry here then um, I'll tell you a little bit about my ebook. You may be wondering if um, it's possible to get some sort of literature about uh, watercolour techniques, perhaps literature that I have written. Well, I have written an ebook. It's called Watercolour, a book of watercolour techniques. Um, the book contains 20, 23 chapters. Um, ranging from uh, landscapes to, um, to, to, to seascapes, uh, so, so it's water and, and, and land. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a book designed mostly for people that are learning um, uh, watercolour and would like to learn some new techniques, so it's a book full of techniques. It is a book which is full of tips and tricks and a number of uh, pictures which I show how to paint um, step by step. You can go to my website, the address will come here in a minute, and uh, uh, have a look at uh, what the different uh, chapters contain. And uh, if you decide you would like to buy the book, which doesn't cost very much, it's only about 15 US dollars, um, then you can pay by PayPal and uh, as soon as I've got the money, <laughs> as soon as I've got the money, as soon as it's been paid for, yeah, that's, that's what you say, um, then, <laughs> then I will send it to you by email. Now back to the painting. I can also use my hair dry. It's not so important here. Um, one doesn't usually use a hair dryer on wet into wet because it blows the pigments around too much. But this isn't so, mu so much wet into wet, um, so I can use my hair dryer here. At the bottom of my stones I can paint a little bit of green, as if it was grass, I mean, just, just, for, just for the fun of it. Okay, so, cadmium yellow, so a quick deep green cadmium yellow and a little bit of Payne's grey. That will give me a deep green and this colour I can paint at the bottom here. Nothing spectacular, just a little bit of, of green colour at the bottom as if there was grass around the stones. Again, this here, painting the green over the art masking fluid doesn't give any effect. And perhaps a little bit of sky. Well, why not? No, and now I'm do going to do it pretty quickly, so a lot of water, a little bit of colour, and Just put a little bit of okay, no, you, now you can see a little bit of the red colour from the stone has gone into the sky, but that is just fine. So nothing special, just a little bit of blue around here. And now the whole thing's got to dry before I can remove my art masking fluid. The whole thing is now dry and now I can remove the art masking fluid. I do that by rubbing my finger on the area here. You can see what happens. The art masking fluid gets removed and where it was sitting there are white areas. And you can say what do we do now? Well, this is the fun thing. 
because we want to have some structure on our stones. We've got some of the color on the stones here. We now want to remove the white and we do that by we do that by dampening the brush. So it's a wet brush, damp so put onto a piece of tissue. And now the fun starts. We start dissolving the paint which we have on the on our paper. over the rest of the stone. So on this stone here, where there was quite a lot of art masking fluid, I have quite a, a large area which will have a light colour. You've got to be careful with this here because if you dissolve all the colour, then the colour on the stone will be even over the whole of the stone. So um, watch out how much water you use and how much you dissolve. I've got the red stone here again. I'm dissolving the colour, not all of it. So I've still got a, a texture on it. And the last stone here, the blue one, where I didn't have so much art masking fluid, I've got much more colour on the stone. And we'll see how this affects. One can get quite realistic patterns on the stones in this in this way here. Yeah, I think I have to have a little bit more. So I've got the three stones standing here. Again, <coughs> now I'm going to let them dry. But while we're here, you can see, if you put a lot of art masking fluid on, there were the, the areas which are going to be covered with art masking fluid, they're going to end up white. And if you have too much of the white, then you won't get very much of the stone color. And it's difficult to um, spread it around to get a good pattern. The last stone here, there was not very much art masking fluid on it. So most of the area was open to, um, to, to, to the colour of the stone and the pattern is much more intense. So you've got to think about that sort of thing. Now our stones need a little bit of, 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 of shadow. If we now say that the light is coming from the left side here, then the right side of the stones will be a little bit darker and the light the uh, parts of the stone will be on the left side. It is quite an accepted thing that uh, shadows are blue, a bluish in colour. And um, the bluish colour that one uses quite often in watercolour is ultramarine blue. But this is a little bit too blue. And doesn't matter, really matter what you're going to be painting it on, this could be a little bit too blue. So I add a little bit of brown sienna. There was a little bit too much there, perhaps so much here. So I, I get a colour where the ultramarine blue has lost a little bit of its intensity. And then I paint it on the back side of the stone. I use a little bit of water to dissolve it around, push the colour around. That could be one of the stones. The same with the next stone here. The shadow, of course, will be very much 
up to the light area on the next stone. So So I painted on here and with a wet brush move it around a bit. The pattern still shows itself through the um, through the shadow colour, so that's all right. And the last colour here, the last stone here, it also has shadows on stones are okay. If, if the light is coming from from this direction here, then this area here will be in shadow, and the bottom of the stone will also be in shadow. So. It's not just the back side of the stones. It's also the underside, or rather the bottom of the stones, which have a little bit of, of shadow as well. You see my grass here, I've painted it just once, so it is now uh, dried and lost a little bit of its um, form. So now I go in and give some extra strokes of paint. It should of course be done when the stones are completely dry otherwise you're going to get them to run a little bit but, uh, like this one is doing but uh, just a little bit more. I can also use my rigger brush. You know the rigger brush, the the rigger brush with a lo uh, long hairs. A little bit more color on that. Just a little bit of. bit of strokes of green, a little bit more, something like that. Well that is finished now. Let's have a look at the stones here. Yeah, as you can see, this one where there's a lot of art masking fluid, the pattern, the texture is a little bit weak because there has been much too much art masking fluid uh, spread on, on, on the original uh, drawing here. Here it was a little bit better and even better on this one because here there was very little art masking fluid. There was more area for the colour to catch the paper and uh, it's, it's much easier to get a pattern on this. So remember when you're using this technique, find out how much art masking fluid you've got to put on the paper. Um, too much art masking fluid, not enough colour. Much less art masking fluid, much more colour comes to the paper. Quite often when uh, large stones are standing around in, uh, in fields, open to the elements, uh, moss and uh, Lichen starts to grow on the stones, giving them a, a green colour. Perhaps not over the whole of the stone, but uh, there will be patches of green. And um, I'm thinking about uh, trying to show a little bit of green colour on the stones I've just painted here. The colour which I'm thinking of using here for the for the moss on one of the stones. I think I'll, I'll try using two different colours, but the first one I shall try will be um, cadmium yellow and Payne's grey. This will give me a, a deep green colour, perhaps a little bit more yellow to it. And um, this colour, well, I, I'm going to paint this onto the lightest stone. The um, 
the moss usually is somewhere around the top of the stones. Perhaps something like that, and perhaps a little bit more, a little bit further down somewhere. I don't want to cover the whole of the stone with the with the moss. Just a, a few areas like here. And on this stone here, which is a darker stone, I'm going to use a colour which I mix with um, lemon yellow and Payne's grey. It'll be a little bit lighter green. That's my lemon yellow here. And a little bit of paint's grey, perhaps a little bit more of this. And this I can paint on top of the stone here. Well, I don't know if it looks realistic, but it's a nice, uh, nice colour. But we can try and put a little bit of moss colour on the one here. So, that is the uh, last thing I'm going to do with my stones. I'm going to let them dry and I'm going to see how they look. So that was painting stones with the use of uh, art masking fluid. Um, now we've seen two uh, different uh, techniques. The one in the other film with salt, this one with art masking fluid, and of course there are other techniques. Um, you can also paint uh, stones without the use of any um, additional uh, <laughs> tricks, <laughs> if you want to call this tricks. Um, but um, it's fun to paint uh, and, and, and try different things. And uh, don't expect it to be um, a good result the first time or every time. But uh, the more times you try it, the better will things end up. So um, keep on painting and have fun. Hi. Hi. The last time I showed you how to uh, get structure and texture onto stones by using salt, fine table salt.